Hello everyone, today I'll be making a video about the Quasar VX format. Now, I have made videos about this format in the past. I've made quite a few videos, very detailed videos, where I show you exactly how I buy these machines, how I repair them, how I restore them, how I maintain them, in a whole lot of detail. Now, I do have one of these machines in my possession, and it works it works great now I've used it quite a bit and then it just keeps going and going I know this machine it requires quite a bit of maintenance but if you happen to do that maintenance yourself you're gonna have a whole lot of fun now this machine I consider it to be historic uh, I know the, it was released in the United States back in 1977 but it was actually released in Japan back in 1975 now, I actually bought another one, yet another machine. I mean, I love fixing these machines. This particular machine was on eBay uh, a couple months ago, and it was actually being sold for about $550. And I noticed that the price was being dropped. That price dropped to $450, and then it dropped to $350. When I saw that that machine was being sold for $350, I knew it, it, it was time. I had to buy that machine. Not only a machine, that this, this machine actually comes with videotapes, um, not just any videotapes. They actually come with, that would be newspaper clippings, where the newspaper clippings explain what's recorded onto these videos. And that's something very special to have together with a videotape, a newspaper clipping about it. And not just about the videotapes, but also the machine itself. I'm going to show you some prices. Now, back when this machine was released, it was uh, it was quite expensive. It cost around nine hundred dollars. I mean, compared to the competition that was around, for example, the V Core Two format, it was actually less expensive. The V Core Two format, when it was released a year before, back in nineteen seventy six, it was about one thousand three hundred dollars. So that was quite a bit a big difference. Uh, so this video, I'm gonna call it an un uncrating video because actually when I received this machine, it did not come in a box. It actually came in a crate, an actual plywood crate. Now I've been doing this for about four years. I had never received a machine in a crate before. And I, I wanna show you this crate because the person that made this crate, they did a wonderful job. They really protected this machine very well. All right, let me show you this crate right here in a lot of detail. All right, now I'm actually using my cell phone. I know a lot of people, they say, oh, content creators, they don't really use their cell phones because only people that only have about 50 subscribers use their cell phones. But I happen to have more than 50 and I use my cell phone and I'm going to continue using my cell phone. All right, now that's this crate right here. It's a plywood crate. I mean, it's incredibly tough. This material compared to, for example, cardboard, this can take quite a beating. And I love the fact that the this seller, he actually used two by fours on the bottom right here. That, that way that this machine can be carried with, for example, a forklift or a hand truck. I actually happen to own a hand truck right here like so. By placing those two by fours, you're able to use your hand truck like that. It's a very well designed crate. I really want to show it in a lot of detail. Now, I've actually already opened this package, but not completely. As you can see, we have a, a packing peanut right there on the floor. I decided to make a video just on the unboxing, on the uncrating, because it was really well protected. This, uh, this machine cost me $350 along with videotapes and along with, that would be newspaper articles, wonderful newspaper articles that I really want to show you in a lot of detail. All right, so let me go ahead and remove the top cover right here. Okay, so this plywood right here, it's, uh, well, it's not three quarters of an inch. It, it seems to be, I would say it's about five eighths of an inch. So it's quite tough. Actually, the, the seller told me that he actually made this at his work. I don't know exactly where he works. He might work uh, making furniture or uh, something like that. I mean, to be able to, um, to make something like this at work, you, you need, for example, 
you need table saws, you need a stapler, you need a drill. Uh, look at this right away. You don't see the machine right away because it's very well protected. That would be with a styrofoam material right here. Not just one layer. This has quite a few layers. See right there, I have one layer. Uh, this is going to make quite a mess, but I don't really care. I really want you to see this very well and hopefully inspire you to buy these machines and to fix them yourself. They're wonderful historical machines. There's actually another one right now being sold for about $550 and do buy it. I mean, this is my hobby, but I've realized that uh, it's, this hobby of mine has kind of... Um, it has changed. I've realized that beyond being a hobby, this is actually sort of like a mission. A mission to save those historical recordings of our past. I mean, look at this. I, I already moved two layers, but I'm still not, not in there. I, we still have more protective material. So, the, yes, this is a total of three layers of styrofoam. Okay, right away we can see we have some videotapes. Now they don't look, uh, they, they're not like in mint quality because these are used, these, these do have recordings. Now I actually played one of these tapes. I actually played this one right here and it actually has a Disney, Disneyland ride demonstration video. Now I've checked if that specific demonstration is on YouTube and it is not. Now, I do plan to upload quite a few videos regarding this format, the 1977, in the US at least, VX format, made by Quasar. Now, I have a whole lot of videotapes regarding this format, not only these right here that I just received. Let me go ahead and show you what I have been purchasing lately, and I do plan to buy more. So we have a total of six right there. That would be seven, but take a look at this. Okay, now this is my stack of Quasar VX format videos. And I do plan to upload all of these to YouTube in the near future. We have the, the red ones are the 120 minute. The black ones are the 60, 60, and the blue ones are the 100. But take a look at this. Now, I did not know this myself till about uh, two weeks ago. I actually received this particular purchase about two weeks ago, but I was actually showing my, that would be the stereo micro cassette format machines. And I really wanted to finish that before I showed you this right here. Like I told you before, I really specialize in the vintage videotape machines. Now I noticed this tape when I, uh, when I opened this package and it kind of threw me off. As you can see right here, it says Video 30 cassette, VC30. I did not know that there was a 30 minute runtime VX format tape, but yes, there was. Notice right here, we only have the 30. Normally these say 30, 60, 100, and 120. This only says 30. It's a very short videotape. I did not know that this, this existed and I do plan to upload this in the near future. All right, so let's see what else we have in here. We have quite a few uh, videotapes. Now this is a 60 minute one that happens to say clay plus Spinks fight. This is actually a boxing match, a boxing fight. Somebody actually recorded this way back in 1977 and I do plan to upload this. I, I mean, And I love the fact that these are complete. These actually have commercials, which are wonderful commercials for, from back in the 70s. Okay, this is a uh, wine bag clay plus Spinks fight. It says Friday 15th 1978. Now, I wasn't even born in 1978. I was actually born in 1982. Um, but this is a hobby of mine. I mean, about four years ago, I decided to, to start this hobby. Now, I didn't buy this particular machine. I'm kind of working my way backwards in time. And I do have other machines that I plan to show in the near future. But I really want to finish showing you this, this particular format 
the Quasar VX format. Now this is the 60 minute runtime. Wonderful. Now we do have more tapes in here. This is another 120 minute tape. Now this happens to say W tall right here. Let me open this up. Okay. Oh yes, I've seen this film, Walking Tall. It says it's two hours long. It's wonderful to see that it says two hours because that means that the, this does have commercials because if it did not have commercials, it would not be two hours long. It would be a shorter runtime. Uh, Walking Tall. Actually, this movie has been re -re uh, remade quite a few times, but this must be the original, the original version. Wonderful. Okay, let's see what else we have here. Now, I am going to have to clean this very well because they're pretty dusty. They have a whole lot of uh, packing material on them. I'll do that later on. I just really want to show you this to kind of inspire you. There are other videotapes regarding this format right now on YouTube. It's a big package. Uh, I don't remember exactly how many they are. I'm not, do buy these. They have very wonderful 1970s recordings. Okay, okay, this is wonderful right here. Let's see. Uh, this says Watergate, uh, Nixon, Frost. This is actually a Nixon recording. Richard Nixon, the president, Richard Nixon. I mean, I'm going to love up uploading these to YouTube in the near future. Okay, uh, look at this. Oh, yes, let me. Okay, I really want to show you this. Okay, look at this. It says, close up, Nixon for the record. There was televised at 7.30 on channel 11. Okay, it says, the Nixon, the final Nixon Frost interview special, former President Nixon talks with David Frost in the last of five interviews. The program being edited at press time consists of material not used in the four previous discussions, which were telecast in May and condensed from some 24 hours on conversation held from March 23 to April 20th. According to the program executive Marvin Minoff, their interview includes Mr. Nixon's comments on the 18 half minute gap in the water tape of June 20th, 1972, three days after the Watergate break-in. And why, says Menoff, the president didn't have the White House tapes burned. Other scheduled subjects, Mr. Nixon's nominees to the Supreme Court, former Secretary of State Henry Kissinger, and former Attorney General John Mitchell, U.S.-Chinese relations and president's last day in office. 90 minutes. This, this is actually a 90 minute runtime show that was actually recording, recorded onto that tape right there. Now I'm going to love uplo uploading these in the near future. This was from the TV guide, A slash 108. This is something very wonderful to have along with a vintage videotape like this. It's something very historical. I mean, at least to me. Uh, there's a lot of history about this format because it was actually a 1970s format, which I happen to like. I mean, I do like the 80s just slightly more than the 70s, but I do like collecting the 70s machines. All right. Now we do have quite a few more tapes in here. Let's see what else we have here. We have another 120 minute runtime tape right here. Let's open this one up. This actually is still in this bag, which is nice to see. Okay, now this, oh yes, wonderful. This is Bing Crosby, the incredibly famous Bing Crosby. Wow, this is, uh, I love showing you this. Okay, so this is the actual tape itself. It's a 120 runtime tape. All right, let me show you this. Right, right up. I mean, somebody actually took their time to, to clip these, to save these, to add this. For example, this is, this is a uh, date right here that was not originally in the clipping. Somebody actually taped this right here. 
It says, May 25th, 1978. Bing Crosby, his life and legend, his fabulous career, his family life, through scenes from his great movies and TV shows, the stars who appeared with him pay special tribute to one of America's most loved entertainments. Host, William Holden. This kind of shows all of the, the guests that are, look at this, Bob Hope. Now, I have quite a few Bob Hope recordings. Uh, yes, uh, Dean Martin. Huge names right here. Okay, this was actually televised via ABC. Brand new special at 9 p.m. Channel 4. Wonderful thing to own. All right, now we have uh, we have more tapes in here. Let me show you another one. Okay, so we happen to have a a one hundred minute runtime tape right here. Let's see what this has. Okay, it's a one hundred run, minute runtime tape, along with its labels yes now i don't have many of these labels i have uh i think i have about three let me show you those okay yes i have happened to have a total of three now these were the labels that you were able to place on your tapes so you can kind of write down what particular recordings are on those tapes wonderful thing to have they, they have sort of like this yellow colored backing to them wonderful Let me put this aside. Okay, now that right there is the owner's manual for the Quasar VR1000 machine, which uh, it actually, actually, this machine was actually called the Great Time Machine because it was able to record even when you weren't home, which was something very innovative for 1977. Now there were other formats that can do such a thing, which I'm gonna show you in a little while. Now this is the manual for the Quasar VR1000. I really wanna show you this in a lot of detail. Now you will find images of this particular manual online, for sure. This actually came with the RF converter. Some of those were the channel three, like in this image, it says three right there, but some of, some of these were the channel four. But notice this right here. It says Quasar video cassettes. It says VC60, VC100, and VC120. Nowhere right here do you see the VC30s, which is pretty strange. That's, that's the reason why I didn't know that they existed because I've seen images of this manual online and I never saw that it said VC30, but they do exist. I do have one of those. Came with the RF converter, the timer which I actually don't have, the VT1000, the wired remote, which I also don't have, that will allow you to pause your recordings. So you can go ahead and save space so it would not record those commercials. But I love knowing that most, not all of them, most of my videotapes happen to have the original televised television commercials. Okay, this kind of shows a uh, diagram of all of the Okay, now what is this right here? This is the AFT switch. Now I'm gonna tell you a little bit about that in a little while. Wonderful, dehumidifier, yes. Now that dehumidifier, it is quite loud. Now I have turned that on in my previous videos to let you know how loud that is and also how much power it consumes. Now, where I live in San Jose, California, I don't really have a need for a dehumidifier. It doesn't really get that humid where I live in San Jose, but this machine actually happens. Actually, I suspect it actually has this dehumidifier because the video drum on this particular machine, it does not have channels. Those channels would kind of, um, they would really help if there was moisture in the air. There was less chances of the videotape sticking onto the drum and creating a nightmare. So this particular format, and actually the fact that this particular machine does not have channels on its drum means that you have to clean that drum quite often. 
okay it says push the dehumidifier button on operate for five to a maximum of 10 minutes push the button again to turn off dehumidifier like i told you i really don't have a need for such a dehumidifier uh, wonderful it's letting you know how to connect your antenna as well as how to record now believe it or not i do record onto this format which is i know it's weird i mean why would you want to record on something so old and so bulky as a quasar vx format and also with such a low resolution i mean the resolution on this format is quite low it's it's actually lower than vhs but i think it's a very fun thing to do Okay, it's letting you know how to play back a cassette. Pretty straightforward. It's a pretty easy machine to use. There's not many things to move around. Okay, this is wonderful right here. It's letting you know how to avoid recording over your programs. This actually has a sort of a, a uh, plug that you remove and you place it right here if you want to avoid overlapping your recordings. All right, this is showing you the camera, which I actually don't own. I actually don't plan on buying that camera. I actually record from a computer. I have an HDMI to composite adapter. This signal right here happens to be a composite signal in color. A microphone, I, I don't have that microphone either. I actually use an adapter to convert this input, which is actually a phono monoroll input to an RCA one. It's telling you know how to record with the optional timer, which I actually don't have. Wonderful. It's, it's more, it's kind of, this is kind of like a troubleshooting section. It's showing you sort of like the symptoms as well as a possible causes, how to fix those problems. This is a specifications page. I love the specifications page. For example, I've made uh, very detailed videos for the stereo microcassette machine format machines. And I love showing these specs on them. It shows you a whole lot of information. Method of recording, single head. Yes, it is in fact a single head system, but it is quite impressive. I mean, when I learned about this format, I saw playback videos on YouTube and the quality of those videos was very low, incredibly low quality with a whole lot of jittering and artifacts, a whole lot of rainbowing. Um, but it was only after I actually bought an actual machine regarding this format and I maintained it the best I could. I'm going to tell you, I'm not a professional, but I, I, I mean, I don't think you have to be a professional. I mean, if you happen to know how to fix and maintain a VHS machine, there really is no reason why you shouldn't be able to fix anything videotape based. Okay, taste speed, it says two inches per second. And there is only one speed. There is no way to adjust the speed. I mean, unfortunately, on some other machines, for example, the V-Core 2, you had a total of two recording speeds. And regarding, for example, VHS, which wasn't released till about 1978, you had up to three speeds, but not this format. You only had one single format. Now notice this, it says tape head speed, 3,600 RPM. Now that is quite fast to have a video drum spinning at 3,600 RPM. Tape size, half inch, yes. The actual video ribbon inside of the Quasar VX format tapes is actually a half inch diameter. I mean, I, I've, I've thought about respooling these guys because the tape that's in there, or the ribbon, it is quite old. It tends to uh, cause a lot of wear and tear, but I haven't done that yet, but I might do that in the future because I do plan to continue recording onto this format. Which, like I told you, I know it's, it's, it's a weird thing to do, but just I, I think it's a fun thing to do. It says cassette tape, Quasar 60, 100, or 120. But like I told you, there is in fact a 30-minute runtime videotape. That would be this guy right here. I mean, 
if you don't believe me, there is in fact a 30 minute runtime one. Now, I'm pretty sure that this particular video tape would have cost a lot less than the longer runtimes. That would be the 60, the 100, and the 120. All right, let's continue seeing these specs right here. Okay, rewind time. Now this is wonderful to see. It's letting you know how long it would take to rewind an entire tape. It would take about three and a half minutes to rewind a 100 minute. Now there were the 120, that obviously would take a little bit longer than three and a half minutes. I would guess it would take a little bit more than four minutes to rewind one of those. Uh, input voltage, pretty standard, 122 volts, 60 hertz, that makes sense, especially in the United States. In the United States, we happen to use the 60 hertz system. Input power, 98 watts nominal. But notice it says nominal. It can actually consume more than that if you happen to use the dehumidifier. Operate, operating temperature and storage temperature is common sense. Uh, modulation weight. Now this is wonderful to see. This machine actually weights exactly 44 pounds. Uh, that is quite heavy. But it, that's actually not the heaviest machine that I own. I own other videotape machines that are heavier than this guy. And I do plan to show you those in the near future. RF inputs. It has both VHF and UHF. Pretty standard. It has RF output. Actually, I don't really use the RF out. Whenever I use this particular machine, I try always to use the the composite video out. You get much better video quality if you use the composite recommended video input. Okay, this is inf this is wonderful to see right here. It says one volt at 75 ohms. Now I've noticed something. I've noticed that the older a machine is, the more voltage it requires for the input. And obviously the newer the machine is, the less voltage. For example, a modern day machine, you would not feed that machine one volt. I mean, that's way too much voltage. All right. It says the recommended microphone input. That would be negative 70 decibels at 600 ohms. I don't really use a microphone. Video output, one volt as well. Audio output is 0.4 volts. Wonderful specifications page right here. And that's pretty much it. The manual for the VR1000 is not that detailed. It's not that complicated compared to other machines, which I will be showing you in just a little while. So that's the manual. This actually came together with this machine. This was a wonderful uh, purchase for me. I mean, at $350 to have a complete machine along with a manual, along with six videotapes that happen to have wonderful recordings. Like I told you, they have wonderful recordings regarding Bing Crosby, regarding Nick, Richard Nixon, regarding uh, these wonderful, that would be uh, boxing matches. All right. So let's see what else we have in here. We have yet even more protective packaging. I mean, the seller, he did a wonderful job protecting this machine. Wow, look at that. I use a uh, separate piece of plywood here to kind of divide the sections. And we have e yet even more protection. It's like, wow, this machine is very well protected. All right, now, Yes, this is the machine itself. Now, this is going to be quite a challenge to remove. This is this machine, like I told you, it's 44 pounds. It's not a lightweight machine. Okay, let me try to remove more protective packaging to kind of make this a little bit easier to remove. I am going to have to do quite a bit of cleaning. This is actually my living room slash bedroom. I happen to live in a very tiny studio apartment. Okay, that, yeah, that's that's pretty much it. I'm gonna try to, to pull this out. No, this is not gonna be easy at all. Okay. Wow. Oh. Yes. Okay, that guy is out. Now this is not lightweight at all. Okay, I'm gonna close this up. I'm gonna place the machine right on top of it.
Now this seems to be bagged very well with quite a few bags to kind of avoid. For example, if this mesh, this package actually became wet, this really helps. It kind of lessens the, uh, it protects it against moisture. Oh. I really want to see how difficult it is going to be to, to fix this particular thing. Now this will be officially be my third Quasar VR1000 machine that I have fixed. Now this is something I have never seen before. This machine happens to have that would be the original dust cover. Now this machine it is quite dusty, it is quite dirty. Uh, it's gonna take a lot of cleaning, I know that, but I've never seen this. Okay, this is the dust cover. It says right here, Quasar Video Recorder. There. Look at that wonderful logo right there. This logo really reminds me of the, the Atari logo, which I did use back when I was a kid. I, I used to uh, use my Atari video game systems. Oh, wow. Okay. Wow, it doesn't look bad. I mean, it's not cracked. It's not broken. Okay, let me show you this. I had never seen this before. I want to show you this right here. It says this Quasar cabinet is finished with a simulated wood grain exterior. Federal law prohibits removal of label except by consumer. Well, this label has been here for a long time. It says printed in Japan. Wonderful thing to see. Now this is the power cord. It seems like the power cord is in okay state. I mean, the pins are not broken. They're not bent. The cable is not uh, damaged. They use uh, blue tape, which is wonderful. Blue tape doesn't really make a mess compared to masking tape, for example. Now this happens to have the serial number. This is the serial number S7084671212. I really, I'm really happy to let you know that number. I mean, these old machines, they should be accounted for. As you can see, yes, it is quite dusty. Yes, it is quite dirty. Look at that. I, I just made a clean spot right there. <laughs> Anyways, I mean, uh, this is the cover. Uh, it, it looks okay. I mean, this is actually aluminum. Uh, aluminum, it's quite difficult to restore because this is actually brushed aluminum. It has very, very fine brush marks. So if this was scratched, it would be very difficult to remove that scratch because I would have to make those very fine brush marks. Again, I will have to get, for example, steel wool and do this right here. It takes a lot of time, a lot of passes, but it looks, it looks wonderful. This actually looks better than my other machine. It's, it's in better condition. Uh, this is loose. Okay. Yes. Wonderful. I can see the video drum. I mean, this video drum is actually very easy to remove. So it would have been awful if this machine did not have it. For example, when I bought this machine, I never saw if it had the video drum or not. So I actually took a gamble. But I mean, at $350, it wasn't really much of a gamble. Even, even if I don't fix, if I'm not able to fix this particular machine, I still consider those recordings as along with those mag... Uh, newspaper articles to be well worth the $350. I mean, at least for me. Okay, now all of these video drums, they all had a specific number on them. This happens to say, I believe it's uh, 53720. Yes, wonderful thing to see right there. Every single video drum had a different number. Now I suspect why that was, because uh, these machines, I mean, I happen to love maintaining machines myself, but back in 1977, uh, the homeowners, they probably didn't know how to do such a thing. So they would have to have these maintained by someone else. So the, the fact that this has a specific number and there was no single video drum that had a, uh, they all have different numbers. 
it was a wonderful way for you to receive the same video drum because it was a chance that you can receive a damaged one or an inferior one. Okay, so yes, I can actually see the video head right there. It, it, it feels okay. I mean, technically you're not supposed to touch these heads, but I don't care. Uh, I can I can feel it, which is good. I mean, when when you cannot feel a head, that means that the head is either broken or it's worn. It's gone. It feels okay. I can feel a slight bump on there, which is a it's great news. All right. This front cover is okay. I've seen when this cover is broken, it doesn't stay. It keeps falling off, and it's okay. We have all the buttons. This is the. Uh, check button right there it seems okay we have the TV slash VTR buttons we have the tuning dials wonderful sound uh, yes everything is here all the buttons are here nothing seems broken okay let me check something I don't know if this machine has its tuner the tuner is actually placed on the back of the machine let me see if it has that Let me turn this around and check if we have the tuner. That would be located right there. Let me open this. Door is the left. Yes, we do have it right here. I mean, I can't imagine how difficult it would be to find such a tuner in the here and now. Now, this happens to be a channel 3 tuner, which I really don't mind because like I told you, I don't really use the, uh, the coaxial video out that would be this guy right here, VHF out. I don't use that guy. What I use is this one, the RCA composite. You'll get a much better video image out of that guy right there. Okay, I'm gonna leave that open. Now, I'm actually not gonna turn on this machine. Actually, it's a very bad idea. Whenever you receive such an old machine like this, you really shouldn't turn it on right away because you don't know what's going on there inside. You don't know if there's loose metal parts inside. You don't know if there's some... Um, okay, now th this might seem gross, but many times when you buy these very old machines, they have rat droppings inside. They have, for example, animal parts that would be like cockroach parts. And those are in fact semi-conductive. So if if you just go ahead and plug this guy in, there's a big chance that it'll 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 trip your breakers on your home because there's there might be shorts in there. I'm gonna have to open this machine and inspect it very well before I even decide to turn it on. All right. Now, now let me show you something uh, very wonderful right now. Let me flip this over like so. Let me put these video tapes aside, which I do plan to upload, like I told you, to YouTube in the near future. Okay, let me show you this right here. Okay, it's quite heavy. Okay, now this is quite a sight right here. Now, it's not every day that you are able to see these machines especially not two of them okay now the one on the left is the one that i was able to fix this one on the right was the one that i just bought actually i bought this one about uh about a month ago but i really didn't want to make this video till i finished showing my audio micro cassette machines so this one is working it's working very well it works amazingly i mean for its age the fact that it's a single head system it looks it looks wonderful now i have shown videos where i play back quite a few tapes on that machine and the image is it's quite impressive now this other one i will be fixing uh actually i'm actually in the process of fixing another machine which i consider to be even more historical than these guys so i i, I'm, I think i'm gonna fix that other one before i even start working on this guy all right now let me show you something else Now, like I've said in the past, my videos, they're not short. They're quite long. They're very detailed. Now, since I am showing this machine once again, like I told you, I have made videos about this machine in the past. I want to show you something else.
that would be this right here. Now this is something that I purchased from the same seller that sold me this machine. Okay. Now this is the manual. So I, I technically have a total of two manuals now. See right there, Quasar Video Recorder Owner's Manual. I have two manuals, so that will be one for my operating machine and the other one will be for the one that I plan to fix in the near future. This right here is wonderful to see. This right here was actually uh, tied onto the machine itself back when you bought it brand new. Notice right here, it says the great time machine because yes, it was considered sort of like a time machine. You can go ahead and go back in time record shows when you weren't home when you for example if you were out shopping if you were out working and watch their shows something very innovative uh this actually opens up i mean i've never I've, i mean i've seen images of this card right here but i've never seen it via video which i'm very happy to do so this actually opens up i mean you might not know this it says the great time machine videotape recorder Tapes TV shows on another channel. Tapes TV shows you're watching. Tapes shows with the TV off. Yes. The home videotape recorder with exclusive alpha scan single video head. In cassette recording, memory set controls. Two hour recording capability on a single cassette. 60 and 100 minute cassettes are also available. But like I told you, it does, it, there's no mention of the 30 minute runtime one, which I'm very happy to own. The great time machine means great times. Yes, I do believe that. I mean, this machine was actually released way before I was born, but I've seen the recordings that have been made on this machine. And yes, it is great times because the televised programs have changed a lot especially the sports now i do have sports televised programs and they're very different back in the 70s you didn't have as many advertisements on the sports programs for example product advertisements for for example i have rodeo i have quite a few rodeo show broadcasts that would be the finals i have the 1981 rodeo finals as well as the 1982 Rodeo Finals, as well as the 1983 Rodeo Finals on this format. And I've seen those, I've transferred those to a digital format. And it's, it's wonderful to see that there's like no product advertisements at all. I mean, you won't see any product advertising, for example, for Powerade, for Gatorade. I mean, none of that. It was about the sport. It wasn't about the, the advertisements. It's something very different, I mean, uh, wonderful to see. And I do plan to upload the, those in the near future. Now, now I, I technically have two of these guys. I mean, these are quite rare. This is the actual inserts. Now, I've shown this insert in the past. So I probably won't get into this information in this video. It actually came with a spare belt. Now, this machine doesn't just have one belt like this. It has quite a few but it's wonderful to have a spare belt. Okay, now this is the manual for the timer. Now, like I told you, I don't have the timer, but it's wonderful to have this manual right here. It says Quasar Video Timer slash VT100. Now that was the model of the timer, the VT100. Let me show you this right here. Okay, so it says, this guide was prepared to acquaint you with the features and operation of the Quasar Timer VT100. Keep it handy for future reference. Yes, now this timer was quite interesting because you had to place these little tabs right here. Uh, I'm pretty sure it was very easy to lose those tabs. Uh, this is quite different compared to the timer on another machine I'm gonna show you in a little while. So you would actually plug this in and you would plug in your VCR, that would be the VR1000 right here. So whenever these timer settings would be activated, your machine would activate. And since the machine has physical buttons that you press down, you pretty much leave it down on the record setting 
and set up your timer and just go do whatever it is you wanted to do. You want to go out outside to the park, go out working, go out shopping. You would never miss your shows. Wonderful. This kind of tells you how to use the timer, which you actually don't have, like I told you. Uh, this actually says the specifications on the timer itself. Now there was a uh, power capacity of 480 watts. You didn't really have to use this uh, specific timer just for your VCR. You can use it, for example, for a floor standing lamp, but you have to never ex exceed 480 watts of power consumption. It actually consumes one watt all the time. It's always consuming one watt. Some people call that vampire power. It, it, it's actually a 24 hour programmable system. It wasn't 100% uh, accurate. It says plus minus 30 seconds or less, which is fine. The minimum time was 15 minutes. So there was a minimum. It says the weight 1.65 pounds. It was quite a big timer. It comes together with a total of six time setting pins. It says, see your Quasar video recorder dealer for additional time set pins. I mean, if in case you lost them, for example. Uh, wonderful. It says, Division of Matsushita Electric Corporation of America, printed in Japan. Yes, because technically this format was actually invented in Japan but it was introduced into the United States in 1977. Wonderful thing that I really wanted to show you right there. Okay, now let me show you one more machine, which I've actually shown in the past. Now that would be this guy right here. Now I have made very detailed videos on this machine. I know that, but I really want to show it again because I was able to find a very wonderful article that kind of compares this machine, which was released in 1976, compared to the Quasar VX format, which was released in 1977. All right. Kind of place them next to each other, which is a wonderful sight. Like there. Okay, so I'm gonna use this image in my background while I show you this. Now this happens to be the manual for the Sanyo VCore 2 format. That would be the VTC 8200 model. That would be this machine right here. The reason I want to show you this is I have made videos about this machine, but I never actually showed you the manual for it. I mean, look at these wonderful drawings right here. They're pretty much self-explanatory. I mean, if you don't really want to read all of this, you can pretty much just look at the drawings and kind of find out what they're trying to tell you. For example, it's saying, don't drop it, don't hit it, don't leave it on a slanted surface. That makes sense. Don't place it anything on top. For example, books. Do not use any powerful magnets because it, it does in fact record onto magnetic media. That makes sense. Keep it away from dust as well as moisture. That makes sense. And uh, always try to press the stop button after you're done with it. Don't just leave it on. That makes sense. Pretty straightforward. It says uh, features, compact, lightweight design. Well. I guess. I mean, compared to a modern day machine, these are quite big and bulky and heavy. But I mean, for 1976, this was uh, pretty compact. It says up to two hours of programming on a single cassette. It says, notice it says up to, because there was an option to record one hour, but with higher resolution, easy six second cassette loading. Uh, but I mean, this that's still a long time six seconds that means that after you press play the machine doesn't play right away it takes six seconds to load the tape onto the video drum now i have shown you that process in a lot of detail and my other videos on my video page it has pause control for programming editing or stop action viewing audio dubbing yes 
memory digital counter now i do have that counter automatic end of tape shut off yes wonderful now that timer is this guy right here now it is quite big but it's actually it doesn't really make a lot of sense because this is technically something that's older than the timer that was sold for this the 1977 great time machine the timer for this machine you had to actually set those little pins those plastic pins but not on this one this was a little bit more advanced because you didn't have to set those pins for example there was no way for you to lose those pins there was no need for pins all you would do is you would set this depending if you wanted 30 minute recording time, 60, 90, or 120. Very simple right here. Nothing to lose. You will not lose those plastic pins. Uh, this is the time display. There was this, this would actually either show your time, the current time, or the time that you wanted this machine to either turn on or turn off. I don't actually use this machine in the here and now, but I, I like owning it because it's kind of part of this machine. Like so, like that. Wonderful sight to see right there. Okay, this is sort of, sort of like a diagram showing all of the different buttons. Wonderful. Now you'll find this particular manual online for sure. Okay, the rear of the machine along with its connections. Now this is showing you the optional tapes. They have the V120 and the V60. I actually don't have the V60s. I only have the V120s. I have quite a few of those. It's letting you know the maximum recording times on those. Wonderful. Uh, <laughs> yeah, this is very cute. Look at these wonderful uh, drawings right here. It's kind of showing a videotape next to a heater. It looks like a kerosene heater and it looks like he's not that happy about it. It's showing a videotape that's uh, it's being kind of, uh, someone's grabbing the videotape inside and he's, he doesn't like that either. And the third one is showing that, now I've thought about doing this. I thought about making a video where I show you how the inside works because believe it or not, the leaders on this particular format they're quite awful because they do snap quite often you have to fix the leaders on this particular format it's letting you know how to remove and install the rf unit rf converter actually on this machine the converter is on the bottom on this machine the converter is on the back it's easier to access the converter on this guy compared to this one It's showing you how to install the antenna as well as your televisions or your monitors. All right, recording TV programs off the air. Pretty straightforward. How to record. Recording with video camera or microphone. I actually record onto I, I record onto both of these formats in the here and now. I think it's very fun. All right, pretty self-explanatory right here. Like I told you, you can find this manual online. How to adjust the tracking? I mean, I do have to adjust the tracking for sure because some some recordings that I have they were technically not made with this machine, so I do have to move the tracking back and forth. Okay, this is wonderful to see. It says maintenance. Yes, this this particular format does require maintenance. Actually, this format does not require as much maintenance as this one. You get a lot more wear and tear on this guy. Okay, the VTC eighty two hundred is precise precision instrument and treated with care. Will provide years of satisfactory performance. However. In the event of difficulty, the owner is advised not to attempt to make repairs or open the cabinet. Servicing should always be referred to your servicing dealers or Sanyo authorized warranty stations. Cleaning rotary video heads. Whenever clear sound is reproduced but there is video noise, 
throughout or on a major portion of the picture, the accumulation of dirt on the rotary, rotary heads may be the cause. A head cleaning cassette is available through your Sanyol dealer for this pur purchase and may be ordered part number v uh, VT25CL. Wonderful thing to see. That would be the cleaning cassette. There was in fact a cleaning cassette for this format. Actually, I don't really like using cleaning cassettes because I believe you can do a much better job when you clean a machine manually. But that's just me. All right, there's a troubleshooting section with a symptom cause and correction. It continues right here. Wonderful. It's the Sanyo. Actually, the Sanyo logo, it did change. I don't remember the exact year when it changed, but it did change. Uh, this is uh, 1200 West Artesia Boulevard in Compton, California. Yes. Now, I used to own another machine. That would be the VTC 8400. They had a 4 right here. It was a newer machine. A much better performing machine. I no longer have that model. But that other model that I had, I remember that on the original box, it actually said Compton, California. Which makes sense. I mean, that's pretty much uh, Compton, California happens to be close to the coast, coastline in California. So they would, uh, they would receive these machines from Japan way back in the 70s. Wonderful thing right there that I really wanted to show you. But now I really want to show you this. Now this right here, okay. Now this is not available online. I've checked. This is an actual newspaper from 1979, which is technically two years after the Quasar VR1000 machine was released in the United States. So it was, it was pretty much the end of this format. I mean, this is the actual newspaper. This is not a reproduction. This is this has not been printed. Uh, this was sold to me from this same seller that sold this machine, which is like I told you, at three hundred and fifty dollars. It was this was a wonderful purchase. This is from the the plain dealer. This was sent mailed out on Sunday, November twenty fifth, nineteen seventy nine. I mean, that's a long time ago. That was technically two years before I was born. Okay, this is from the store. I, like, I don't know if this store is still around. It's from the Forest City. It says, today only, exclamation point, capture your favorite TV shows with Quasar's home video recorder. And it's showing this machine right here. I mean, this is a huge ad. It, it, it almost takes up the entire page. It says inflation fighter. But notice that price right there. It says $377. A great value. I mean, it really is. I mean, you do have to consider that when this machine was released in the United States, it cost about $900. So about two years later, that price drop, dropped quite a bit to 377 so it's kind of like a forfeit it's kind of like their way of saying you know what we've noticed that the beta machines as well as the vhs format they're, they're the clear winners i mean uh we're not we're gonna stop making this format sanyo they, they i mean a quasar company they they decided to stop making this format so they were they were kind of trying to get rid of these machines because there was a big stock of them they were selling selling them for three hundred and seventy seven dollars. Incredible. Now we're showing the timer right there. It says uh, it costs regularly forty nine dollars, but they were giving it to you along with this machine for free to kind of convince you to buy this machine. It says record shows on one channel while you're watching another. Record the record the show you're watching and enjoy it again and again long playing two hour video cassette records most televised movies those that would be the 120 minute ones it says quantities are limited no rain checks no deliveries take with only limit one per family and it says right there again the r1000 
It says shop today, Sunday only, 10 a.m. to 6 p.m. Exclamation point. I mean, this is wonderful to own. I mean, at least to me, the fact that I collect vintage machines, I love owning this and I love showing you this. This is wonderful history regarding the format wars. This really lets you know that it was over. The format wars, it was over. This format, obviously, it failed. It lost to the VHS format, which continued. They, they kept making the VHS format for a long time. Okay, I really wanted to show you that right there. All right, now let me show you something very wonderful. Now, this is something that I found online. You can find this online, but I really want to show it because it's really relevant to these two machines. I mean, not just to these two machines, but machines that were planned on being released in the near future. Now, this is from the Video Files newsletter, letter, which was, uh, it's a very old newsletter. I believe this is not around anymore. This is from January slash February 1977. But I mean, look at this. It, it, it seems like it's, it's hand typed. Uh, they took a lot of uh, care on this newsletter, the video files newsletter. This says issue number five. It was pretty much in its infancy, this video file newsletter. It has sort of like a little pig, very cute. Okay. It says, although delayed somewhat by frozen limbs, busted water pipes, and general procrastination, the video files newsletter lives. Some of you who do not live in the semi-tropics may laugh, but we down home folks just plain are not used to the temperatures down around 12 degrees, snow on the ground, and all of the company displeasures. I have decided to commit myself to at least five more issues of this modest venture. So yes, even though this is the issue number five, there was at least a total of five more issues that were released back in 1977. Okay, details regarding the increased tab are to be found within. It will be my intent to make TVN, which is the video files newsletter, as worthy a product as my time and resources will permit, and will endeavor to attract as many serious new readers as I can. In other words, you will be seeing advertisements in various places, if possible, and specifically if it is well received. Photographs, cartoons, and reviews, interviews, indexes, and similar items will be included. I will not do this just to fill up space, but to rather will include only those things that would seem to be genuine interest. In order to do these things, it is necessary to switch to a bi-monthly schedule. Okay, so this video file newsletter was actually uh, distributed twice a month back in 1977. This is wonderful history. I mean, I wasn't even born yet when this was released. The, de the demands on my time are especially heavy from now on until the first issues. Week of June. So frankly, there is no other choice. The many newsletters and phone calls I have received are most encouraging. I hope that each of you will stay aboard. I know that there are many of you to whom I owe a response of some sort, and I will try my best to do so in the following space. Yes, wonderful history right here. This very old video files newsletter which is no longer around. I mean, pretty much nowadays you have uh, online forums. You don't really use these kind of newsletters anymore. It says, the Video Files news newsletter is supported in part by a grant from the Land of Cotton Center for the preservation of popular culture. Now this is wonderful to read. It says preservation of popular culture. That's pretty much what I do for a hobby. I really try to preserve that televised history by buying very old videotapes and digitizing them. And hopefully I will be able to release them to the world via the wonderful YouTube. Old times, there are not forgotten. It is published intermittently at 2014 South Magnolia Drive 
Tallahassee, Florida, 32301. Entire contents, copyright 1977 by Jim Lowe. Send checks and bequests to him. All rights reserved. Yes, wonderful news newsletter from 1977. I, I really want to show you this because this talks about these two machines. Okay. Now, before it talks about these two machines, it really talks about many wonderful things. Okay, it says right here, it has come to my attention that Sony has called selected Betamax purchasers, some more than once, to conduct a survey of owners and I guess to get guidance as to the future development of the product. Among the survey question asked is whether you would be interested in a feature that would automatically delete commercials. Uh, wow, that this would be something quite awful for the people to, that happen to love commercials. They were thinking about uh, releasing a setting that would automatically delete commercials. Or oh, says, an automatic pause and restart of some sort. If any of you know how this is technically possible, I have a guess of my own and the opinion of another avid reader. I would appreciate your passing it on. Also, would enjoy hearing about anyone else experience with the Sony survey of Betamax owners generally. Wish they'd give me a ring. Okay, so obviously when you have these two formats around, you also have the beta format. And uh, technically the beta format, it really, it was able to record a much better resolution than these two guys. And uh, beta kept going. I mean, for sure. These machines, these, this format, they were both uh, discontinued and beta kept going. I mean, not as much as VHS, but beta did continue. I really wanted to uh, read that right there. Okay, now let me show you something else. Now this is wonderful right here. This is kind of talking about the future formats that are in the plans of being released. It says, I haven't heard much out of the video disc confab. Yes, notice it says video disc. Now back in 1977, I mean, you did have a few video disc formats, but they were very limited. I mean, on those video disc formats, you could only record a very few minutes on those guys that was held in late November. So unless it gets tacked onto the end, I won't have much for you this time. It does appear that release of the MCA slash Philips has been set back again, perhaps until late this year. Now, when it says MCA slash Philips, obviously it's talking about Laserdisc. I mean, they're, they're referring to the uh, the infancy of Laserdisc because back in 1977, the Laserdisc, it wasn't around yet. It was still being developed. This is wonderful history right here. I have conflicting reports as to whether or not they are being test marketed in Fort Wayne, Indiana. Anyone with first-hand knowledge would be most welcome to step forward. There is also talk that RCA has decided to throw in the towel on their system. Okay, this is wonderful to read. I mean, I collect all of these formats. I really love reading the history about them. It's talking about RCA. Now, obviously, it's talking about the CED format, which was technically released back in 1980, before 1977. So. Even though this article was released in 1977, they're talking about RCAs that would be the CED format. Don't know if this is true, but if so, it sounds like a wise business decision to me. Okay, I mean, whoever wrote this article, it, it really doesn't have much faith in the CED format. Okay, fellows, the MCA slash Phillips has it all over you. Anyway, I do have an article sent in by uh, Gad. I don't know who. <laughs> this is very funny. Anyway, I do have an article sent in by... Uh, was it you, Larry, or Steve? 
I've gotten it separated from the envelope. So whoever you were, let me know and I'll give you a free quarter page ad. Wow, that's wonderful. I mean, to get a whole quarter page ad on such a uh, article would be something very wonderful back in 1977, which should be of interest. So here it is in its entirety. Okay, now this is wonderful to read right here. At the video disc programming conference held this fall, Harvey Skin, president, Sony of America, made some statements that are of interest in the context of the special issue and excerpts that talk follow by Harvey Skine. Sony has not announced that it is in the video disc field. You may then ask why I am here talking to you at a video disc conference. The reason is that Sony is in the hardware business. We make delivery systems in the home entertainment industry, and I believe Sony can help you in the software end of the business. Let me at the outlet state that I am not here to disparage or criticize any company or format system. I have nothing but respect and admiration for such companies as MCA, Philips, RCA, and Teldec, and what they are doing in video disc. So yes, right away Sony is letting people know that they're not really developing the laser disc or the CED format, but these other companies in fact are. Sony spends tens of millions of dollars each year attempting to discover and develop new ideas, and in particular to perfect its videotape system. That would be the beta format. Sony initially began work on the area about 20 years ago and is still working very hard to develop further and improve on what it has. I mean, beta, the beta format, it really didn't want to go away. I mean, even though VHS, it kind of, it was the king, it, it was the, the one that won, you can still buy beta machines for a long time. It didn't really want to kind of fade away. Almost all people in the entertainment field use videotape recording in their business. The U-Matic tape system has become the standard for audio visual communications in virtually all industries, especially in the entertainment field. Movie companies put their product on U-Matic cassettes so their executives or their bankers can see what is being produced with ease and comfort in their homes. So it's talking about the U-Matic. Now you definitely did have the U-Matic format back when these two machines were sold. Actually, Umatic, it, it, it goes all the way back to 1970, so it is quite an old uh, format. It was used for a long time, the Umatic format. The record companies are putting their new artists on cassette tape so that their affiliates around the world can see firsthand what the artists look like as well as what they sound like. Umatics have been in operation around the world for more than four years. Uh, yes, definitely. I mean, by 1977, the Umatic format is, is letting you know that it was already around for four years. Actually, it was around longer than that, at least in the uh, professional industries. And to have a very minimum of service problems. I mean, yes, the Umatic machines, they were made very well. Actually, the Umatic machines, believe it or not, they do in fact have channeled video drums, which is something wonderful to have. It really minimizes the wear and tear. Unlike these two formats, these two formats do not have channel video drums. Okay, it says, now the Betamax as a result of the research and development that Sony has done on videotape over the years and particularly the U-Matic system. Our engineers have been able to develop a format which is suitable and logical as a home entertainment device since the engineering elect electronic principles are the same as the U-Matic, we know that the quality and reliability has been proved. Yes, so pretty much this is uh, Sony's way of putting m faith on their beta format. I mean, compared to these guys, which makes perfect sense. I mean, like I told you, the beta format was in fact a superior format to this guy's. Okay, it says, it's with use of the half-inch format, yes, 
uh, the half inch format was used for quite a few uh, different competing formats. This records onto half inch, the Quasar VX format, but this also records onto half inch. That would be the Vcord 2 format by Sony, I mean by Sanyo. Actually, in, back in Japan, this was actually released a year earlier in 1975, but it was not manufactured by Sanyo. It was re manufactured by the national company. Each day, our dealers around the country are selling hundreds of Betamax to customers because people are happy to have the opportunity to be able to program television in their own homes at their own convenience. They, went, they want to be able to decide to see the program they want to see when they want to see it. They do not want to be tied to a schedules established by the stations and networks. Now, this is wonderful to read. Actually, um, the actor that, that was in the children's television show, that would be Mr. Rogers from Mr. Rogers' Neighborhood. He actually went to the courts to fight so that the uh, the whole concept of videotaping TV shows would continue because the government, the FCC, they wanted to make these machines, not just these, but also VHS and also beta to make them illegal to use. And that, that was something wonderful that the Mr. Rogers did regarding this because he convinced the court system not to get rid of this whole concept because it was for a greater good so that children can watch those wonderful shows w that were being televised while they were at school. A wonderful thing to read right here. All right, now let me show you this right here. Okay. Uh, it's, it's still talking about the beta format, which I really don't really want to get into in this video. It's talking about the X-rated lure. Yes, for sure. I mean, I'm, I'm going to tell you the truth. Uh, the X-rated films, they're, 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 they're very uh, influential regarding videotapes and video discs, for sure. Uh, I'm talking about uh, Blu-ray right here, obviously. Okay, now look at this. That's the VCore 2 format machine right here. It says, thanks to my faithful readers, I now have color brochures of the two new, notice it says new, and highly touted half-inch cassette decks. Portions of these are reproduced on this page and the next. Below is this two-speed Sanyo. It has the features that you wish yours had it takes a camera has stop action runs for two hours when the slower speed is engaged that would be the lp mode right here it has both the standard and the lp okay not shown the digital readout timer that would be this right here i mean it's not being shown right here but that would be this guy right here Okay, that can be set to turn off after 30, 60, 90, or 120 minutes. I am told that there it is, it is a true cassette system and does not, as indicated last issue, require rewinding before the tape can be disengaged and removed. Okay, now obviously it's talking about the EIAJ2 format, also known as the Panasonic video cartridge. Uh, which was actually released in 1973. The brochure is a handsome one. Well, I guess. Perhaps your local dealer has one by now. And the presentation mentions the fact that it has a two-hour capacity over paragraph or so. You get the impression that they wouldn't want a potential Betamax purchaser to overlook that fact. Yeah, so these two machines, they were uh, basically competing against Betamax. Because VHS, it wasn't around yet. It wasn't ready yet. I mean, it was being developed, but it wasn't ready. Naturally, it is incompatible with all other cassette systems. The suggested retail is 1000 
$350 with timer and the tape goes for $19.50. Now this is just wonderful to read. Now this machine, when it was released, it cost $1,350 along with the timer, but the tapes, it did not come with a tape. The tape itself costs a total of $19.50. Let me show you one of those. That would be these guys right here. I mean, I really love making this video because I know that there's a lot of thirst out there regarding information about these very old machines. And I love making these videos. I'm gonna watch this video over and over again. I love watching my own videos. Like I told you, this is my hobby, but it, it's really changing into something else. Sort of like a mission to preserve these recordings on these very old formats. Like I told you, I plan to upload these videos onto my video page in the near future. So this costs $19.50 back in 1977 wonderful thing to know because I didn't really know how much these guys cost back in the days. Now obviously these don't cost $19.50 in the here and now because these are quite difficult to find. All right let me continue reading this wonderful article right here. If anyone out there has seen this machine and the quality of its picture I mean, I have, it's a wonderful picture. When the slower speed is used, I sure would like you to send in your observations. You've got to think that Sony will do everything it can to meet this competition. And to John T in San Fran, thanks. Well, obviously it's talking about San Francisco. I mean, San Francisco is pretty much about a 25 minute drive from where I live in San Jose, California. Uh, it's the Bay Area. It says uh, the Bay Area, it is quite innovative. It's talking about all of these specifications regarding the V-Core 2 format machine. Uh, yes, this is wonderful to read because it has prices, both the price for this machine, $1,350, as well as the videotapes, $19.50. All right, let me continue reading you this right here. Now this is the last page. I'm almost done with this video, which I'm very happy to make. Now this is obviously talking about the Quasar VX format machine. Okay, it says, Gabe Villani, district manager for the Miami division of Quasar Sales Incorporation, has good enough, was good enough to send me info regarding the Great Time Machine, an excerpt from which you see reproduced here. Like the Sanyo, it has features that are of interest. A two-hour tape, single speed about midway between the two speeds of the Sanyo, and the remote paws are of particular interest. Gabe says that he wouldn't be happy to answer your questions about this unit and direct you to a nearby source where you can view it. You can reach him at 1600 Northwest 159th Street, Miami, Florida, 33169. It even has a phone number. Obviously, that phone, no longer, that phone number is no longer relevant. Tell him that I sent you, please. Oh, yeah. Another interesting feature of this VTR. Uh, it says VTR because it's uh, technically a short way of saying video tape recording. Is the operational timer, which can be set to turn on, turn off, and then turn on again exclamation point so then you can record shows from different parts of the day or night without visiting home base in between times yes well this machine its timer had sort of like an advantage because you can set different recording times more than one but unlike the recorder for the Sanyo v core 2 format you can set it but you can only set one recording time so you can only record one show if you weren't home. You can record up to three shows with this machine if you weren't home. Uh, let me show you one more thing, which I think it's uh, very interesting. On this particular, I kind of skipped this, but I really want to let you know this right here. Now on this newspaper that I had just shown a while ago, I want to show you something that the uh, 
the person that sold me this wrote down way back in 1979. It says right here, I mean, it's kind of hard to see because it was written with pencil. It's sort of like questions that this person wanted to ask when they arrived at the store, when they were selling this machine at $377, which is quite low. I'm pretty sure it must have cost the manufacturers that much just to make the machine. It says, does it come with a tape? Which I'm pretty sure it didn't. Uh, yes, I really want to show you that. Because, I mean, it was quite a bargain at $377 to get such a machine. Along with the timer, which was a $49 value. But it's, it's it, the person that went to the store, was kind of, they wanted to ask. Now, I don't know the answer to that question because obviously I wasn't even born yet. Uh, so I really welcome any of your questions regarding any of these machines. For example, if you happen to have these machines and you're trying to fix it yourself and you're having a hard time, please do ask me uh, for help. I would love to help you because I've noticed there's kind of like a lot of greed and a big lack of help regarding the maintenance and the repair of vintage machines like these. Thank you so much.